All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of the Up and In Show. We are here at Cards and Co- Culture on the Purple Couch. I'm Anthony Arenado, and I got a really special guest with me, uh, RC, Ryan Clark. I appreciate you, man. Oh, I appreciate you. You know, nothing like good Baton Rouge morning. That's it. Uh, get out, smell the air, hear That's the it. birds chirping. Nah, I'm just playing. Have some <laughs> technical difficulties. Nothing like starting our podcast late and behind, but... Bro, I'll be honest with you. So, uh, Mike Tyson... For the pivot, when we did the pivot with Mike Tyson, we yeah. lost two cameras. What? Yep. There we go. We right, lost, that's good. We lost two cameras. Our um, situation wasn't even as close to as bad as that. Floyd Mayweather's mic fell during his interview about halfway through, and the guy that was uh, in, charge of, in charge of audio uh, was too scared to tell him. So Stop. we did the... Nah, man, we've had... Um, too scared? Yeah, we did. <laughs> we did Jalen Ramsey... And we, one of the cameras was on, like, the wrong resolution or something like that. So Channing's basically blurry the whole show. So we've had, like, all of these different things happen. And, uh, one, I don't panic because it's not yeah. my job. Yeah. You know, <laughs> but our producer goes into, like, the deep abyss of, of worry. <laughs> and because she's like that, like, she's fixed it all and at made least made everything everything work. But, nah, like, that's why I wasn't tripping. I get yeah. it. I felt I felt I had supreme confidence in you, Kylie. So you killed it. We're here. We're rolling. It's good. Um, but seriously, I appreciate you being here. This has been a long time coming. I feel like we've talked about this maybe for a year, two years, even when Jared was my yeah. boy Jared Mitchell was doing it with me. Um, but you, uh, you know, you're from Baton Rouge. You grew up in Louisiana, right? Went to LSU, um, played at LSU, got to sign in the NFL. Won a Super Bowl, played in another. You've done a lot of things. You're a broadcaster, and you got mm-hmm. a podcast now. So again, I appreciate all this time and stuff. Um, yeah. But what do you, what do you consider yourself? Entrepreneur? Like, oh no, I'm just athlete? A, like I'm just a, a dad. <laughs> like honestly, man. Um, you know, I think we all look for different ways to search for passions and yeah, to yeah. chase them. Um, you know, like. We play ball. Like, that's what we do. And I tell people all the time, I'll never have another job I love as much as football. Right? Like, that was, you know, for all the people in the world who knew when they were six they wanted to be a doctor and they actually get to live that dream or, or, or be a lawyer or they had all these different things they wanted to be. Like, for me, it wasn't that I wanted to be a football player, but it's, that I, it's what I've always been. Like, I've been that my entire yeah, yeah. life. And I don't necessarily know that I'm not anymore. You know, like I'm still a football player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just not as good at it, <laughs> you know. And yeah. I think that that's the that's the thing. And so now, you know, you want to be you want to show your kids like the the things you feel like you do well, right? Like I work hard, yeah. And 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 that's always been me. And I want my I want my girls to see it, you know, so they know, you know, that's what a man should do. A mm-hmm. man should want to provide and find ways to provide. And I want my son to understand that. Work isn't extra. Work is a requirement. And, you know, that's kind of how it is. But the things I get to do now are cool. Um, the ESPN thing was something that kind of just started to happen. I got opportunities to go on and, you know, started trying to build that relationship. And obviously I was the first player to ever have a TV contract while being an active player um, in really? the NFL. I was. That's pretty I awesome. Was. So for the last two years it was cool. I'd go up during bye weeks. I'd do a Tuesday hit. I'd go up during the off season. And so that was, Uh you know, so that was really fun. Yeah. And then now with the podcast, it was just one of those opportunities that came up and John Saunders, before he died, uh, I get a call, I'm walking on ESPN campus and he calls me, his assistant calls me like, John wants to see you. And I was like, I have no idea why John Saunders (laughs) would want to see me. You have that heart drop first. Yeah. And we had the conversation about not letting them box me into being a football player. And I think now I'm finally getting to use some of those chops that won't allow them to do that. I love that. So. All right. I want to say I I love that after all that, you said that you were a dad first. So let's talk about your family first and Mm -hmm. introduce that. You got kids here in town and right? So Well, my kids are old, bro. So I know, that's uh, what I'm like, right? Yeah, They're, so my wife and I, my wife and I met in high school. Um So she's from here too? Or from She's from Honeville. Okay, that's right. She's from St. Charles Parish. Yep. I'm from the West Bank. I went to Shaw. Okay. So I met her at a picnic. Um Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Met her at a picnic. Her cousin went to school with me. I went to old boys school. Her cousin uh-huh. went to school with me. I showed up to the picnic late because my mama used to make me go to church. It was on Sunday. Church was long as hell. Uh, so I showed up late and it was actually her cousin that liked me 
But everybody uh, made the whole party like wait on me for us to do high schooly yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my wife was basically like, we waited all this time for this. <laughs> And, and so that's like, kind of yeah what? yeah me yeah, yeah. Then she, so then she ended up coming to LSU though and I knew her from before that and so we got we became friends and obviously you know eventually got married but so I had kids in college oh you did so, okay. yeah so my oldest graduated from LSU already okay she lives and works in San Francisco uh my middle is my boy plays football at Arizona State he graduates from college in December Very cool. and then my youngest is at Parkview she'll be a senior um, so you guys are almost done yeah, man, we're about to be empty nesters. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I don't think we're going to be good at it, you know, because so much of our life yeah. has revolved around, like, our kids because, well, we had them so young. Yeah. We've actually never been married without children, right. you know, so that'll be interesting. You know, yeah. she's getting her master's in psychology, so she basically just psychoanalyzes me she's playing in mind every, games in with every you the whole argument. Time. <laughs> no, Ryan, let's talk about your true feelings. No, I don't have no true feelings. <laughs> No, All my feelings are from false. a childhood thing. Yeah, she always oh, says boy. that. Is this about how you were raised? Yeah, and so, let's talk about your childhood. Yeah, I tell her don't psychoanalyze <laughs> me. She tells me don't talk to her in my TV voice. But like raising, <laughs> I love you that. know. Yeah, you know. Like, raising, well, I get paid pretty well to do this TV voice. So yeah, she don't like it, man. It. It's a because it's the thing I do to not escalate arguments. What that? What I to just, use your TV? I don't, voice? I don't. It's not necessarily. It's not my TV voice. I'm just. I'm making sure. That I stay on a tunnel of positivity. You see what I'm saying? Because, because if she's already upset, and then I say like the slightest thing that pisses her off more, oh now we turn what could be a little bit of discussion <laughs> into a whole day of uncomfortable. And so, and so yeah, man, you know, so I try to speak a little quietly. And she doesn't like when I actually uh, pronounce and enunciate my words correctly. Oh, and then she's, she knows something's up? Yeah, or she feel, just, yeah, she want me to talk like I'm from the West Bank. <laughs> and so she's if like, I'm not- the Ryan that I yeah, know. so you if talk. I'm not, that's TV Ryan. And <laughs> he's not allowed in the house. She's like, I'm not Stephen A. Smith. I'm not talking, yeah. She said it before. She said really? those exact words before. Really? I'm not Stephen A. Smith? I'm not Stephen A. Smith. And I, I was like, well, that. if you were, I'd be screaming. Yeah, I was going to say, the conversation would be a lot more <laughs> heated right now. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's awesome. Uh, well, good stuff. Um, and then uh, let's talk about your NFL career first second um what I think one of the coolest things that I think in sports you know I, I played professionally I got a chance to play at the highest level all that mm -hmm. my career didn't turn out the way that I you know had hoped and things like that but I think one of the things you always dream about as a kid is being able to retire with a team that you either play you know played mm -hmm. for all that and you got you got drafted by the, or signed with the Giants originally mm -hmm. bounced around the league but you played majority of your career with the Steelers mm -hmm. right and it was pretty cool they you signed a one-day contract right mm -hmm. so what was that like being able to do something like that and be able to retire as like a lifelong you know well I think you know and I've said this publicly before I don't really or didn't really have a home you know there was like regardless you of, mean the NFL or like just yeah, in, yeah yeah just just regardless of whatever team I was on like at some point, I also wasn't on that team, and it wasn't I wasn't drafted, right? So, right. Uh, you know, forever grateful to the New York Giants for giving me an opportunity because without them, I don't have one. They were the only team that offered me a free agent contract, but you know, Tom Coughlin cut me yeah. and told me he didn't think I could play safety right. in this league. And then you know, two years in Washington, play extremely well. Uh, Sean Taylor becomes one of my best friends. We have this great relationship, play so well together. You know, they sign. Uh, they signed Adam Archuleta, and they give him the biggest safety contract in football history. But tell me they still want me, <laughs> but I can pay for, play for league minimum, and we're all going to play and all those things. And I was like, well, that's stupid. Yeah. Um, you know, then I go to Pittsburgh, and eventually, you know, they're, they, they move on too. And so, like, for me, I wasn't necessarily ever attached to a building. I was attached to people. I love that. You know, and yeah. I say it all the time. I'm loyal to people, not places. Yeah. Um, you know, I get it a lot <clears throat> when I'll actually speak my mind um, about LSU, and it's not positive, right? Uh, yeah. you, you you hate your school. You're this, you're that. No, it's not true. Right. Um, but the the people there, if not my people, aren't folks I can go have conversations with about what I feel. Um, and so when you're able to be honest about people, I think that, everyone's expecting a blind loyalty. Mm -hmm. And, I, and I, don't, I, don't, I don't believe that's true. And so it was cool, though, 
that I get to the end of my career and I got to pick. Yeah. That I got to say, you know, what felt most like home, what people were the best to me, what people I had the, the best experiences with. And it was clearly Pittsburgh, man, when you get to win as much as we did. But when you're also in a place that long and so many of the core stay, which is something Pittsburgh did a really good job of, you know, you create lifelong friendships yeah. and, and lifelong family. And so that's what playing there was for me. And like I said, it always helps when you win. Yeah, no, I love that, man. I love that. You said it's about the people, so that's super deep. Um, well, talk to me. You said earlier in the conversation that you still kind of see yourself as a football player. You're just not yeah. as good, right? And yeah. something I, I think I a lot. <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't say suck, but I'm saying Shit. maybe comparatively to other yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but identity, right? We talk about identity, mm -hmm. and then as an athlete when we're done with that and we're either going into what everybody likes to call the real world or something else, right? Do you struggle with that? Did you struggle with that? Was that something no. that was a weird part for you in your life? No, it wasn't. Um, I think people are a sum of their experiences, right? And though I've always been a football player, I wasn't always popular yeah, or I wasn't famous and, you know, some of these other things. And so, what football became to me was the work, right? Football yeah. was about, okay, how do, how do I approach this day to be better at something I love so much? And because I never really played it for people to love me, I never, you know, it wasn't about uh, fame. You know, it was about mm -hmm. provide, providing for my family. Um, and it was about continuing to work toward a goal. And I think that that's been the hardest part of retirement for me is not having games, mm -hmm. right? Um, the cool thing about sports is is a scoreboard. Yes. Right? Yeah. And so no matter what, at the end of the day, I can say this is how well I did yes. based on the scoreboard. Yeah. An objective um, measure almost, right? Yeah. Like real life feedback. don't have that. Yeah. Real life, real life is, is subjective. Even in – Doing the job I do, no matter how great I think I am on TV or some people may, how much people may enjoy me, if the executives and higher ups see something a different way, then that person gets a job, mm -hmm. right? That person gets a better job than yep, me or a better yep, contract yep. or more money. And that was always difficult <clears throat> for me to deal with. And so now it's more about the creation, you know, like I enjoy, I enjoy the creation. I enjoy, you know, moving forward, stepping outside of my comfort zone. You know, I got to host NFL Live a few weeks ago, and that yeah. was cool for me because that's something I never thought they'd allow me to do, yeah. right? But in, do, in doing the pivot and doing different press and saying, like, I want to host. Like, I, I believe I can get out of this role. You know, getting to do that is fun. And, and now with what we're doing with the podcast and having opportunities to study people, bring people conversations from folks they've heard talk a ton, right? Right, Like you've heard Shaq speak before, you've heard Kevin Hart, we've heard Floyd Mayweather, we've heard Mike Tyson, you've heard Alex Rodriguez, all of these people who are extremely famous that we've got an opportunity to hear, like how can I get them to a different conversation than anybody else has yes. ever heard? You know what I'm saying? And like, so those things are, are cool and that's the same reason like I still train guys, like I don't do it for the money, but, like, I enjoy, like, that's the part of the thing we lose out of yeah, the locker room, yeah. right? You don't see those dudes all the time, and exactly. you don't grind with them. And so, like, I still do that, and I want to create the best training, the best training uh, program possible, the most innovative, the most creative, but the most sound. And so I think, man, like, when you retire, you got to find something else to pour into. Right. And then it also, you know, I retired. I was offered to play one more year, but my son was starting high school. And I wanted him to go to the same high school, play at the same high school, be around my parents, my wife's parents. You know, so we moved back and I poured into him for the four mm -hmm. years. That's awesome. He was in high school. And so, you know, that's kind of been my journey in, in retirement. And hopefully it's a little bit longer because I'm still <laughs> slightly young. Yeah. You know, but got time. A lot it's of time. Been cool. Yeah. Where does that work? At? So you, you, there's a big theme here with everything that you talk about, it feels like, you know. Um, where did that work ethic come from for you? Was that something you had when you showed up at college? Did you learn that after you were, you know, undrafted? Like, no, man, you know, I think it, I think it grows, you know, guys who, and you've been around it, guys who work hard normally are just 
like that to a certain yeah. extent. Yeah. And then there are other people who can learn it to under because they understand how that's going to help them be successful. Yeah. Um, my dad worked a ton of jobs, man. Um, my parents met in college, whatever. My mom had me, so she left. My dad played uh, four years for Nichols, then he ended up leaving. Cool. And uh, my dad worked for the levy board. Okay. Right? So for, I don't know, he probably, my dad probably retired five or so years ago, six or so years ago. Forever, Damn. right? <laughs> yeah. My dad was always... Um, during hurricanes, I wouldn't see them, right? Because they were okay. sandbagging yeah. Yeah. and making sure the levees were good and they would stay at the facility. Uh, during Katrina, I'm in Washington uh, playing with, you know, now commanders, and I don't talk to my dad for three weeks, right? During Katrina? During Katrina because they stayed at the facility. He was bathing in a bucket. Yeah. You know, they were cooking food together, living together uh, because it was just so much work to do. Right, right. Um, but even outside of that, you know, when I was in high school, like I said, I went to Shaw, my pops would drop me off because, like, the facility, the levy board facility was close to school. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he'd give me my lunch money, and it would be in ones because he worked the valet. Damn. You know, yeah. at, at night downtown. And so, like, it was just all these. Right. Like, he just worked, you know. And my dad's, like, the coolest human I know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, when my homeboys go to New Orleans to play or anything like that, they're like, hey, man, send me Mike's number. You know, because <laughs> like, awesome, yeah. like my dad's like that, you yeah. know. And so, but so he wasn't big on advice. Like my dad wasn't like, listen, son, right. you got it. Like this wasn't, <laughs> like it wasn't his way, man. Like he just taught you through the way he lived yeah. and, you know, being there for everybody. But the one thing, the one thing he taught me or the one conversation we had was about work and about providing for your family, you know. And he said, he said, that's what, like, that's what we do. Awesome. And my dad also would only come to church for the actual sermon. He said he didn't need all that singing and stuff. Um, he's changed. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's changed as he's, as he's gotten older. But, you know, the one thing he brought, brought up to me in the Bible was um, Adam and Eve, when they ate the forbidden fruit, that, you know, it said man was, like, he was cursed to just toil the earth the rest of the days of his life. You know, he's like, it's biblical. Yeah. Right? Men are going to work. Right. And so... That's kind of like where it started. And then you know what it is too, man. Like you start to see the successes of yeah, work. Yeah. Right. You you're in high school and we worked out Tuesday and Thursday. Like I I understood what my coach felt when I finished first or when I lifted more. And so I think all of those things, when you start to see how people react to them, how they help you in your sport, they just continue. And I think it got so embedded in me to do it. Like I don't want to half ass anything. No, I'm with that. You know, I, like, I, I don't want to walk on TV and I'm unprepared. 100%. I don't want to pull up to the gym yep. and the guys have, and we got skill work, and I don't know what the hell mm -hmm. I want to do with them. And so, like, you owe people when when you decide to take jobs and do jobs and, and be responsible. You need to be accountable to that. Right. So that's kind of how I look at it. No, I love that because I think about that, too. It's a responsibility and accountability. And if you're a leader or anybody, right, when you're on a team, I felt like I was, like, I took pride in being the hardest worker. Mm -hmm. And I felt like... Even when I was a first rounder, I had a responsibility, you know, mm -hmm. I appreciated the guys that were undrafted and were working as hard, but I was like, I'm a first rounder. I got, I feel like I have more responsibility, you know, to go work and put in that work and stuff. I feel like it's the same thing in business and different things that you do. So I always appreciate when somebody has that similar quality and to hear where it was instilled from, because mine's similar too. my dad was, um, more of an entrepreneur growing up, just like a grinder hustler, that kind of stuff. And then he finally opened up his own insurance agency. And when I was like four, five, six years old, all I remember is us eating dinner and then going downstairs in the basement and him and my mom just cold calling people like till yeah. nine, 10 o'clock at night, right? Yeah. Just grinding. And if somebody answered, he would drive at nine o'clock at night. He'd be like, I'm going over there to go sell them it right now. Like <laughs> I'm not losing this, you know, like little things like that. And I'm like, right. dude, I, I fuck with that. That's my, yeah. like, I love working Saturdays and Sundays here with this startup because it's like, it's something that. I pour my time into my effort, you know, and that's like, so that's why I appreciate when you said work and what was the, do you remember the quote that you said that you tell your son? I don't know, but you said something about work. It was, I loved it, but. Oh, I don't even remember. Yeah, it was, all, I'm going to pull it and I'll send it to you because <laughs> it was dope. I remember looking at Kylie being like, oh man, that was cool. So I'll, I'll get that quote, but um, yeah, man. Um, I know you got a roll here in probably like 10 or 15 minutes, but I want to talk a we little bit about, I was going to say. We got time. All right, you got some time? Cool. Yeah, we got time. Um, the pivot. That's mm -hmm. something to me is really remarkable and I've really enjoyed watching and even just hearing you talk about it a little bit right now is, you know, we've, 
as younger dudes, I've, I've met you at Traction and mm-hmm. things like that, would look up to you from a, man, that's an NFL veteran, played 10 plus years in the league. Now he's doing his own DB mm-hmm. precision, you know, starting his own little thing and um, on ESPN, got a podcast in the MMA world, all these different things. Where did where did it come from with the pivot? Was this your idea or ESPN coming to you? No, so it's, it's not the pivot's ours. Oh, it's not ESPN produced. No, we own it. Wow. Yeah. So so we own it. Um, me, I, Fred, and Channing, uh, our producer Alicia Zubakowski, and uh, our manager Johnny. Like we all have percentages. Oh my God, this is amazing. I didn't. This yeah. is even better than. So this we is all amazing. we all have uh, percentages of the company, and so like that's been what's fun is it's a business. Yeah. It's an actual business yeah, yeah, for yeah. us, and, which I hate meetings, too, and I'm terrible <laughs> in meetings because I don't know how to not be, like, really honest right, right. Um, about stuff. I feel like that's and, a good thing. People just got to take it for what it is. I know, know man, but, like, I, <laughs> I, we went to one meeting, and this guy is laying out, like, an opportunity for a show, and he's telling me, you know, what it's going to be and how it's going to work, and that they're going to bring in, like, this host from something else. And I was like, mm. <laughs> like, the guys are talking about it. I was like, I don't love it. <laughs> you know, and but like, in my mind, though, I'm trying to be nice, right? Right, and so you know, I'm kind of blunt in the way I speak. And I was like, Well, I was like, one, I was like, We already host our own show, so why would we become like subordinates yeah. on uh, another show, right? I said, And also, I said, The other show, the show that you guys are trying to, you know, have us work with, I was like, We're a better show than this. Mm-hmm. You know, I was like, this is a step backwards for us. And then when I left, I was like, I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> like, I shouldn't have said that. And then, uh, you know, we had another meeting with a company, and I didn't know the company was linked to this certain show. They kept saying they were going to help us by, like, connecting us with or making yeah, us, yeah, like, yeah. sister brother shows right, or right. whatever. I didn't know they had people on the call who actually worked on the show. Like, Ooh. I was never told this. Yeah, right. right? I thought it was, like, a second. It was, like, an company, idea. Yeah, and it was A company like a- that worked with this show. In the capacity, they wanted us to work right. on the show, right? And so, man, I listened for like 40 minutes because I just I don't even like talking on these things. Yeah. And I was like, why do they keep bringing up this freaking show? Yeah. And eventually, I was like, hey, man, look, <laughs> we're a better show than them. I was like, there's not even like, they're not, it's not our demographic. Yeah. I was like, we don't speak to the same people. Right. It's not even the same thing. Like, why do you keep bringing it up? Oh, my God. Then eventually, when we got yeah. the call... Wait, so they didn't even bring, they didn't say that on oh, the no, call when I you said it? one dude was hot as hell. Like when you said that? Oh, he yeah. was fired up. But he didn't have the balls to say something? He said it. No, oh, he, he said did. it. I was just, and I was like, like oh. Actually, I work on it. He didn't, but he didn't say he worked on it. Like, he he was talking about it very, like, personally, though. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, like, like firsthand. Like, emotionally yeah. tied to it. Yeah, and I was yeah, like, yeah. why is he so mad? <laughs> you know, and then we got off the call. There's like, like, ah, that guy actually works on the show. I said, oh. That makes it a lot makes more sense. So much sense. <laughs> so much sense. I was like, I would have said it nicer that we were a better show. Yeah. Than, than, <laughs> I still would have said it, but I would have treaded like I'd have like maneuvered it around. But now, nah, so I work with them. They were on a podcast previously. Uh, our producer left first, then Channing and Fred left. Um, and um, I had done some stuff with them before. And so Alicia called me and said that they might start something up. And I was like, ah. Cool. She's like, can Channing hit you up? Sure. So Channing FaceTimes me. I'm on my porch. We talk for about an hour. And so then we started getting the business stuff together, you know, started making sure all of that was straight, all of that was put in the right places. And um, there it is. Yeah, we got construction going. Yeah, that's great. Hey, guys, it's construction. We're yeah. just going to tell you it's construction. Wow. That way, when you hear that it's construction, you know that it's construction. <laughs> and we're going to fix it anyway. We're just um, going to roll with it. Like it's so, um, we do our first show. The first show, I thought it went well, yeah. you know. And then we do Plexico Burris the same night, right? And I was like, that was terrible. Well, you it's did like, it in the same night. Same night. Yeah. Same night. We go to New Jersey, so we put the first one out. Uh, the second one, we go and we're in Vegas, and it's Marvin uh, Lewis and my son, um, you know. And so then we just keep try- kind of moving through, man, and. You don't, you don't ever really know, like, how people are going to receive things. So yeah. it started out started out pretty well, and we were getting some good guests. You know, I think we had Michael Parsons on the week before they played. Uh, we had Charles Haley because we did them the same day. And so we were doing all these things, and then finally we get Floyd Mayweather. I was kind of telling you about it earlier yeah. when his mic fell, and, you know, we got that done. And that kind of opened up doors because 
now people will see, well, Floyd Mayweather did the show. And he did that. Uh, our, our producer actually produced every one of Floyd Mayweather's um, All Access. Gotcha. And so is that the connection, like, where you guys yeah, got that, him that, in? That, that's how we got there. Floyd. Yep, yep. You know, they're, like, best friends. Yeah. It's really weird. It's like blonde hair, blue-eyed, white lady, right? and Floyd. They're best <laughs> friends. It's a really, it's a really strange <laughs> Uh, strange match. And that's so, Alicia you're talking about? Yeah, Alicia, yeah, knew yeah. Him. yeah, yeah. And yeah. so we did that. And so, like, I think from there, you know, we just kept working to get people. And, I, and the, the the biggest day we ever had, honestly, was like a day. And you know what it is? Like, at the end of the day, I was like, oh, that was a cool day, you know? But it was supposed to be a bigger day. Right, right. Right? Because we did, um, you know, you guys would be the first to notice because we never put it out. Ooh. We shot it with Candace Parker. Okay. Great show. Yeah. Right. Excellent show. She talked yeah. about her, you know, her marriages and her kids and like all these different things. It was just a beautiful show. But we get called the next day. She had a documentary. Mm. And she was like, she didn't know how much she gave away. And so like we respect her. So we was like, okay, no, nah, we'll put it out. Yeah. We'll wait. So we do that. But we were supposed to do, we thought we were gonna get Tyreek Hill and Derrick Henry in mm -hmm. Miami. Mm -hmm. That falls through. Right. Right. So we end up doing um Warren Sapp, uh, we had been working to do Channing's uh, dentist, and she's like a celebrity dentist in mm -hmm. Miami, Dr. Miro, because we wanted more women. And gotcha. we wanted, yeah. uh, you know, we wanted to shine lights on minorities, this and that, right. right? So we finally, so we was like, okay, well, we can move her into this night, but we do Michael Beasley too. Okay. Right? But you know how it is. You'd yeah. like, Got Tyree, you right? Got, right, you all hype, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then, and and then it's like, like uh, and it almost feels like that, like they're like a little setback, yeah, almost yeah, like. Right. And, and you know, and we sit down with Michael Beasley. He comes in, man, and uh, like it's a, like a big production. You know what I mean? It's yeah. Six cameras, like lights everywhere. It doesn't look like it's not as relaxed as most like podcast yeah, atmosphere. Yeah. yeah. So he comes in and he's like, "Hold on, man. This is, hold on. I thought I was doing like some simple podcast. Right, right, like, this right, is, right. This is nuts." So they go out, Channing drinks. We, we put Channing on everybody who has a little issue. <laughs> if you have anxiety, we send you. Because no Channing's the one to chill everybody yeah, out a Channing little bit. Go, like, come on, let's yeah, go take Channing, a walk. Like. Whatever, whatever your advice is, Channing got it. You know, if That's you want to so get great. a drink, you want to smoke something. I love it. Yeah, Channing exactly. can do that with you. Get, you, get your mind get right. You right. Yes. And man, and Mike sits down. Beasley sits down for like the first five minutes, bro. He's just trying to collect his thoughts. You can tell. And, you know, you just do so much studying, right? Because you just want the show to be good. Right. And, you know, I saw that he had been to a lot of high schools. Uh -huh. I just remember, like, high school was where, like, I started to, to, to develop those real relationships and yeah, friends yeah. I still speak to today. And I was like, bro, you bounced around to all these high schools, you know, because I've seen that he's kind of a loner. I was like, how did you even learn to develop relationships? And he's just like, I effing didn't. And then he just, like, takes over the show. Yeah. You know, and he's crying and we're crying. And, yeah. Like, we're giving him our numbers. Yeah. And we're, you know. But that was like that was the show that made the pivot the pivot, you know. I and and I think like you know you move on from there. And when Shaq sits down with you, you can tell he knows something. And there's something about that because he goes, yeah. "Y'all ain't gonna make me cry." Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so like, you're like, like like people know like yep. even Kevin Hart sits down and he's like, "What y'all doing?" You know, it's influential and for the community. Yes. And so like now we've we've gotten in this space that's a little bit of pressure, mm -hmm. right? Because like you build up. You build up this thing and people know or expect a certain thing and you feel like you always have to show up yeah. in that case. Um, but also, it's it's fun, man. Like, we've been around for eight months and we've accomplished uh, so many things as a group and hopefully it just keeps getting better. I, I think it's gonna, bro. And I think what you guys are doing is exactly what you said is peeling back the layers of these people that, you know, we have these assumptions of, yeah. right? Like. Michael Beasley, I have this assumption of in my head from being a young basketball player, him yeah. being an idol of mine, right? Like mm -hmm. when I was wanted to be a basketball player and he was the guy and all these different things, his trouble. And then you hear these stories and you, and it makes sense, right? And you guys asking these questions coming from your guys' background puts them in a, in a position of comfortability to yeah. be themselves almost too, right? And I think what you guys are doing for the long lasting one, I think the world has changed, right? Social media has changed mm. us and the role of men has changed with, yeah. I think the role of women changing and all these different things, right? So you're, I think you guys are doing a really great job of showing vulnerabilities and what makes people who they are. And um, yeah, I, I, it's just, it's amazing to me. And I want, I always wondered, it was like that moment with Beasley where you were like, it made it the pivot. Was that what you always saw the podcast being and what you guys Hell talked about? Hell no, man. No. I didn't know, bro. Like now people, people always ask, 
Um, did y'all did y'all, you guys know it was gonna right, be this right, popular? Right. Hell no. Nah. Like you guys they, you're just gonna like, shoot the shit on well, the couch. Well, like Channing and Fred always said, you know, because they were a part of another huge podcast. Yeah. They're like, yeah, we knew it. No, you didn't. <laughs> like you, you actually You had the aspirations. Right, yeah, yeah. you actually really didn't. Like, right. no, we you never no none of us know that Shaq's gonna call us and say he wants to right. be on the show. Fuck. Like that's you wild. You know, you don't know yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. None of us know, bro. None of us know that when we're when, because I showed up late, because I flew from here for Shaq, yeah, um, to Atlanta, and so I got my flight was late, so they were already there. So mm-hmm. like I was like, I'm gonna get dressed in the lobby. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm getting dressed in the bathroom. Alicia and uh, Channing's wife were, were waiting on me, like, all right, you know, trying to help me, and they're like, wait, um, Omari wants to meet you. I was like, Omari Hardwick. I was like, Ghost. From power? <laughs> and they were like, yeah. I was like, sure. Yeah. Right? He runs over to me, bro. Like, bear hugs me. Where is this? This is in the lobby of the hotel. Because we, like, what we do is, man, we bomb, we go to, like, wherever the people the per- are. Yeah. Right? And so, <clears throat> we got a, we knew where Shaq was staying. So, we just got a suite at Got you, got you. You set it up there. Yeah. Right. Well, Amari was staying there because he was filming a movie. Got you. He sees Channing and Fred earlier. They tell him I wasn't around yet. He wants to see me. So we hug. I was like, bro, you got to come on the show. Yeah. And he's like, absolutely. I take his number right there. We're going back to Atlanta to shoot. And I was like, hey, man, we'll be back on yeah. this day. Like, yeah. You down? Yeah. And he's like, cool. Same thing. The night we do Shaq, yeah. I knew Charles Barkley. We hung out at one of the finals. And so we text every Auburn LSU football so game. Great. Right. Yeah, yeah. So we go to this little bar to eat. Walk right, right in. Charles Barkley's at the at the counter. That's crazy. Right? I go yeah. up to him. I hug him. He's like, nah, let's go upstairs. We go upstairs and eat. I was like, bro, you got to come on the show next week. Yeah. Cool, I'll come on. Like, that's legitimately, yes. like, that's how things are happening. Whereas to now, man, you know, like Devontae Adams, who doesn't talk a ton. Yeah. Um, I say something about him on first take. He appreciated it. He followed me on IG, DM'd me, like, hey, man, I really appreciate you just speaking truth mm-hmm. to whatever, whatever. I was like, man, we trying to make a West Coast trip. Right. Wanna come on. Yeah. He's like, yeah. But, like that is legitimately yes. how it's happening. And so, like when they say that they knew it was going to be this big, like that's actually a lie. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, right. It, right. It, it's a lie. But we've been so blessed, man. Yeah. And like for me, it's getting an opportunity to be around these people that I see as celebrities. Yeah. That I see as famous. Man, you know, like, I love that. And so that's been cool. That's exactly what I feel like my podcast is too. In the same way, like I've looked up to you for years. You come on my podcast, you give me like, you know, credibility and validation and things like that. Younger kids that look up to you then are like, yeah, I'm gonna come on the podcast, the same thing. And it's just like an excuse to, I I say it's an excuse to have really good conversations with people that you look up to and that you can like learn from, you know? And then if there's other people that want to learn from that, that's cool. That's what my podcast is too. So I love that. I think, I mean, I think the other piece of it too, man, like I talk to, like, everybody thinks we have, like, the podcast secret sauce now. Yeah, yeah. Right? Hey, tell me how to... Bro, like, <laughs> yeah. legitimately, it's about relationships. Yes, it's how you treat people, too, right? And like, It's about relationships. Like, if we were turds, then... Well, Channing's a turd. But if, like, the rest of us were turds... Um, as the collective. Yeah. As a collective. One bad one it makes it know, all right. Yeah, yeah like you guys you balance it out. Like, you wouldn't get those opportunities. No. And I think it's also the way you treat people and the feedback from the show, right? Like if somebody comes on your show and, you know, they're walking around here and people say, man, you know, I saw you on the show and I loved it and you were this and you were that. I know more about you. If they feel that way, now they'll tell their friend who's one of their peers, nah, man, I went on this podcast with Anthony and it was was refreshing to have those conversations and this and that. And like, that's how it, that's how it continues to build. But, you know, so for us, it's if you say something on our podcast, like because you got too comfortable with us. Yeah. We won't put it out. Exactly. We care for you. We're, we're not. This isn't about us and our message and exactly. our agenda and shit. Right. Yeah. And, and, and that's the other thing, too, is I think that people fuck with you guys because of the energy that you give out. They know. Yeah, right? that's fun, we're man. trying to tell their story and like get to know them. Yeah. It's a cool benefit that people listen to it and we mm. get to run a business on it. But right. we're here for you guys. And if it doesn't work, Candace, whoever. Right. Like. We're pulling the script, and, right? And that's, and that's what's been cool, man. Like, we did Najee, and Najee was very com- – Najee Harris yeah. from the Steelers. Yep. He was very comfortable. Bro. Really? Like, really <laughs> Said some stuff. That- yeah, like, <laughs> like really? bro, you can't say bro, that. Yeah. There, were, there was a time the show stops, 
and we just all chopping it up. About, yeah, yeah. Like, but cameras are still on. Yeah. The cameras were running, but like we we stopped the show. Yeah. And we just started talking. We was like, nah, bro, like you can do this and this. Because he's just an awesome, yeah. awesome kid. But he was like very comfortable. That's so and so we were like, yeah. <laughs> We're going to take this out. <laughs> We're going to take this out. We're looking out for you. Yeah. Promise so like, you. But that's what, and like, I think that part though, people, people like, yes. you know, there's even, you know, if like some agents yeah. want to know what their guy says, right, right. we'll send it to them. Yeah. Here you go. And they might be like, well, I don't like how this comes across. I will take it out. No problem. Yep. And I think because we've done that now, if that agent has the next star, yeah, we get them to. Exactly. They trust right? you. You, build, or, yeah, yeah. you. And so like, that's what's been been dope about it and now we get into like people wanting to buy it mm -hmm. right and so yep. now, and so like now you got to figure that part out like does it continue to be in your voice can you be right. you and so that's the business side of right. it right but like the 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 conversations and the the outcome and the impact of those things is why you do it absolutely and it's a pat and what i always say too right is and for me, my podcast, even if it doesn't get as many listeners in the beginning of the show, whatever, right? This is documenting my life. Like yeah. when I'm 78 years old, I can show my grandchildren like, hey, look what I was doing when I was, you know, I tried or, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I did this. I was doing this. I was, this is my impact and what I'm leaving, right? And so if I have a platform or a little bit of awareness that I can create, and that's the same thing with you, right? You want to give opportunities, minorities, you want to tell different stories and promote um, the well-being of of humanity and stuff, and that's what I think. You, why I think you guys are doing such a dope job, and what you guys are doing is also what what. <laughs> Bro, we're going to do Caitlyn Jenner, right? Oh wow! And I was just, I was nervous as hell. You guys did it already? Yeah, we did it. Oh, right, it's out, and so I gotta watch it. I haven't watched it. And one. so when when they called and said we could, I was like, nope. <laughs> I was like, we ain't doing it. You know, like I've worked. Uh, closely with the uh, LGBTQ plus community yeah, here. Yeah. And like, I had to learn so much um, just because you don't want to just be unaware. Correct. In, in, in being unaware, you could be wrong. Correct. So I was like, nah, man. I was yep. like, we are not pissing off people. Exactly. I was like, we're not, I was like, wow. Channing, you always talking about your penis and <laughs> sex and stuff. Like, that's the last thing we need with Caitlyn. You know what I mean? So. I have to watch that episode. Bro, so we're in so L.A., great. man, and Caitlin lives in Malibu. Okay. Right? But it's, like, at the top of this mountain. Yeah. So, man, we're, like, an hour and a half ride. Chan, sleep. and You, you drive know, all the way up to her yeah, place? Yeah, to our house, yeah. yeah. So, Channing, sleep, and he just keeps, because we were doing stuff with the Rams, he keeps waking up randomly every 15 minutes going, the Rams are happy. <laughs> and he just go back to sleep, right? <laughs> so, man, we get there. Caitlin walks out. Her assistant, Sophia, walks out. And I was like, man, like, we're really at Caitlyn Jenner's right, house. Right, right, right. You know? Like we're here. Yeah, like, we shake hands, we sit down, and it starts, and it's just like every other conversation, you know? And, you know, you you go back to Bruce Jenner, too. Right, right? that's, because, what, like, that's Bruce, what I was going to yeah, ask. Because right? Bruce Jenner is one of the most famous exactly. athletes who have ever lived. And now Caitlyn Jenner is the whatever magazine it was, Woman of the Year, mm -hmm. you know? And so we talk about those things. And what's crazy is you would think, like, three former, three black former football players sit down with Caitlyn Jenner. Right. It's like this huge deal. It's actually, like, our worst show. Really? From a, a view standpoint, right? Because I think, like, understanding who watches your show and what they care about is huge. Yep. But the other piece of it for us is... Like, we're not, we're not just a black show, mm -hmm. right? Like, we want to tell stories for every community. Yes. You know, that's why we had Jana Kramer on to tell our story about her marriages and, you know, and about husband's sex addictions and being abused. Like, that's a story that anybody could relate to. Like, it's mm -hmm. not about your color. Right. But, you know, like, we definitely did get flagged. You know, I got messages from, you know, like, the black trans community and the black community about picking Caitlyn Jenner in the sense that it's, like, when in our communities, when you have something, like you hold on to it. Right, right. Right. Because historically, it was you couldn't have as much. Correct. Or you didn't have as much opportunity. Correct. So when something is for us, we feel like it has to be all about us. But that's the other part of if we want to be as big as we can possibly be, we have to serve all communities. Um, and so that's been 
part of our mission is that anyone can sit down with us and talk about anything and we're experienced enough, we're mature enough to have those conversations. And that's what Caitlyn Jenner was about. But I'd be lying if I didn't say I was petrified the yeah. whole way. Every I'm, time Channing woke up and said, the Rams are happy. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> like, it's <laughs> over. The Rams are done. We're going somewhere else. Yeah, too. Exactly. <laughs> but, and so like just being in, in doing what you're doing, like be mindful, not only of the validation people can give you, but the conversations you can have in the way that it expands not only you, but your viewers, but your brand. And, you know, I think in this world we are in today, that's so important. Representation matters across the board. And you can't be for one cause and against another one with a similar plight. And so I think that's kind of what's cool about the show, too, is because we own it, like we get to pick the people. Yeah, we get to do whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's dope. Man, I wish we could die. I don't know how much more time, but, like, just even that that sentence right there, just of, like, man, like, how hard – that's got to be so hard, though. Like, what you're talking about is, right, like, when you do have an opportunity and you're speaking about, like, the black community, right, and they want to hold on to that, how hard is it to educate and show, like, hey, this is how we all actually expand? Yes, there's an important part of black history and culture and expansion yeah. and opportunity, but at the same time, it is important for all of us to kind of – blend and get a, like right yeah, like man, how hard tough. is that right it's because i deal with it on the same way on the other side right yeah, and like trying yeah, to it's 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 <clears throat> tough because i mean we don't all think the same right you know we don't all feel the same um like it's crazy like i could come on on your pod and have this conversation and talk about how much representation matters and how understanding uh different sides of different stories matter and then I'll go on TV and I'll stand up for social justice and my whole Twitter will be littered <laughs> with the fact that I'm racist. Right, exactly. You know, and I think I think that's the that's the the, the tough part about honesty. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, like in the same sense, you know, people who are constantly calling me racist and don't know that my oldest daughter is mixed. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm not going to. Like, it's not, I'm not going to, I'm not that person. I'm a validated, oh, my oldest daughter is right, half white. Right, right. I don't have to do that. But uh, what I'm saying is, it's like, people are going to have their outside opinions of it. Right, you. right. And if you start, if you start focusing on, on that, then you actually lose what makes you you. Mm -hmm. And so my thought was, if I have a goal, if I believe in that goal, and if I believe in my intentions, right? If you believe in your intentions, the way that your message is received won't bother you as much. Like, I don't like being liked. I don't care to be liked. Right. I care to be understood. Uh, yeah. Right? You know, like if somebody, if you see me and you're like, you said this and you said this and that meant this and that meant that and they're correct. Right. And they're like, and I hate you. Yeah. Like, All right, cool. Yeah. I respect that. Yeah. You know, it's when they tell you they hate you and they're like, because... Because you don't like this and you don't like that. You're like, I've never said right. any of that. You've misunderstood, mistook you, you, what I've, you, what I've right. said. You've misconstrued what I said. And now I have a problem that you don't like me. Right. Because you actually aren't disliking. It's predicated on false shit. Yeah, yeah. And so I think, and so, and you know, so you have those conversations. Like, it's crazy. I answer my DMs. Yeah, yeah. Like, the requested ones and everything. Like, people being mean. Like, I've been called more N words and more of this and more of that. But I have the conversations with people for two reasons. If you tell me why you believe I'm whatever way you believe and you give me an opportunity to explain, you may actually understand where I'm coming from. Exactly. Right. And if you don't, what you continue to express to me gives me a little bit of knowledge of an opinion that I don't share. Exactly. You know, and so I feel like you, you learn um, no matter what. No matter what. Yes. You know. Dude, that's exactly, I think that's the thing that I, I feel like too, right? Is if if you're ignorant and you're not willing to understand or have an open mindset to listen, right? I'm not saying listen and ob be obedient, but right. listen and hear and be like, oh, okay, well, maybe that explains this, this, and this. It allows you to just move throughout life better, right? Yeah. Understand things and get along with people in such a different sense. And and it's funny that you say you had, a, you know, you have, your oldest daughter is mixed is, I feel like until you're forced to see the world in a different way, right? Like maybe you didn't see things from a white person or whatever the she's mixed with perspective, mm -hmm. right? Until you had a child in the world that way and then had to think that way, right? I don't know. Maybe yeah. you didn't. Like but for I'm just me, saying. like 
I think the 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 strange thing, like when it gets into race and, and ethnicity, right? I went to Shaw. I went to a predominantly white high school. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't go to a school dance where they didn't play YMCA. Yeah. <laughs> like, I was, I was never at one, you know? Um, and so, and so oh. I, I did have, I had the, I had the unique um, athletic experience of a very, very intelligent, polite black kid. Yeah. Right. So when I'm playing bitty basketball, like those coaches love me because I'm smart and I'm a leader and my parents are are great. And so, you know, I would tell people all the time in, in no disrespectful way, obviously, because my, my family is black and they were there for me. I was like, but I was like, from a professional standpoint, I was like all the coaches who have been influential in my life, whether it was high school recreational other than like my pops were white men mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying and and their families and their 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 wives and mm -hmm. their kids were mm -hmm. like my friends mm -hmm. you know and so i got to learn that perspective that oh no nah, like you know there are there are bad people of all colors shapes sizes from different places yeah. but they're also good people right too. exactly and i got to learn that like in just a quick story my neighbors uh and they both passed, unfortunately. Now, my neighbors growing up were white. They were from Covington. You know, we moved into this new neighborhood. Like, the dad was, like, this big old dude, bro. He actually drank milk at dinner. Like, I had never seen that before. I drank Kool-Aid, you know? <laughs> and he actually, like, drank milk with everything unless it was beer. Right. And he was, like, this big old dude, bro. He had a mullet. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, they had, like, all of that, like, five kids, four boys. But, like, his mother was truly one of the most racist people right. I'd ever met, right? And he became, like, my dad's best friend. Yeah. You know what I mean? And right. so, like, you could see, like, it could come from one place, but, like, they get, he got to make a choice. You know what I'm saying? And he That's chose, exactly. and he chose love first. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like, we didn't have guns. Like, I remember at one time we thought somebody was, like, coming to our house. Yeah. So my dad called him. My dad got like knives and stuff. <laughs> he comes over, dang, 12 gauge. Shotguns he's the first, like, ready, right? like yeah. he hunts and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Which was like the first time I'd ever, I was younger. I was yeah, never yeah, been around. Yeah. And so, man, like I got the unique experience of seeing the good in people and to, to see the bad, which allows me to, to say that. Yeah. Right? Like if, if somebody does something, and like I'm grateful for it, or I, I recognize the the good in it. No matter who you are, no matter what color you are, like I'm gonna say it. Yeah, you know. And if you do some foul stuff, I'm gonna say that too. Hundred percent. And I think that's but I think some people can't uh, get with you having an opinion, not being scared to say that opinion, and not being scared of the consequences. Yeah, especially I think in Louisiana too, right? I'm from, I grew up in New Jersey and mm -hmm. one of the th biggest culture shock, everybody's like, oh, it was a culture shock when you got down to Louisiana. I'm like, yeah, because of the way that things are so segregated down here. Like, yeah. this is fucked up. Like, <laughs> you know, like I just like, I didn't, I didn't yeah. understand it, you right. know, like, and it's kind of similar what you said is I grew up playing basketball a lot. So mm -hmm. like I would, it's funny, I went to an all white Catholic high school and elementary school, but then on the weekends I'm playing AAU basketball, right? So I'm with different families in North Jersey doing that. And I grew up, my best friend was Puerto Rican. So I was into his house four days a week eating dinner and right. hearing his family watching eight different relatives and, you know, just a different lifestyle than I had. So when I got to pro ball and there was a bunch of Dominicans and Spanish guys and there was racism within that system, I'm like, yo, this is fucked up. But in my head, right, <laughs> right. I felt like I was like, this is just normal. Like, this right. is no like, and it took me some time to understand, oh shit, you guys came from a lifestyle that where you weren't exposed to this. You lived mm. in your neighborhood and you didn't move, you know, like yeah. you lived, come from the same spot. So I had some compassion, but that's where I was like, all right, if I'm going to have a business, if I'm going to have a podcast, if I'm going to have a little bit of a platform, I'm going to do things that are going to like promote yeah. the inclusion of things, you know? And, and that's to me is where I think, you know, I get passionate about that stuff and I feel like I could talk your face off all day with this shit. Yeah. But no, that's the, I think that's the, you know, man, we're just in, we're in such a, such a tough time because we have so much information uh, so easily as accessible. Yeah. Right. And so we get to hear what everybody says mm -hmm. and we get to know what everybody thinks there was 
a there was some bliss in ignorance. A lot, yeah. You know, um, I say it all the time. Like people will bring stuff to me that maybe somebody said about me or something, and I'm never bothered by what they say. I'm bothered that now I know. <laughs> right? Yeah. To where yeah. it's like I could have been around that person right. and I already know they weren't going to act a certain way to me right, because right, if they've right. been feeling this way, they've been around me for years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. But now I know. Yeah. And so like I'm dealing with myself. Right. Right. When you come around and you speaking to me, yeah. I'm like, nah. Yeah. Don't speak. Like I know. Yeah. And so now I gotta make a dang decision about what I wanna be. And so I think sometimes us not having the knowledge of everything, us not knowing everything a person's going through or thinking helped us be happy. Yeah. And so whereas now it's like, nah, I actually know you don't like me <laughs> or people like me. Right, right. And now you got to deal with that, you know? Yeah, you got to handle it all. Man, well, I know you, <laughs> I think I kept you past a little bit of your time. Yeah, we good, man. Yeah, all right. Well, I'll let you get rolling. <laughs> RC, thank you, dude. I appreciate it. Where no where, can, where's, where do you like to send people? Is it The Pivot? Yes, yeah. Go to, go to The Pivot, man. It's on um, YouTube, obviously. Yep. The Pivot Podcast. But Apple, um, also Spotify, we got some deals in the works where it may not be on all those. Okay, got you. Nice. That, that much good. longer, but it's going well, man. That is. That's Appreciate awesome. Appreciate you, though, hey, brother. No, I appreciate yes, you. Yes, sir, man. Have appreciate a good one, you. though. Thank you.